Good morning, greetings friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis, and while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, we are here for you. 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you. 844-236-6010 is our number. And of course, if you have a success story you'd like to share, or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you have questions about the longevity products, the longevity business, a health challenge you or a loved one may be dealing with, formulations, ingredients, our Truth Skin Health products, 844 844- 236-6010 is our phone number today and every day on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the program or Fucoid Z, Beyond, uh, Beyond Tangy Tangerine 2.0, BTT 2.0, or Healthy Start Pack, Ultimate EFAs, any of the fine longevity products you hear us advertised on the program or you hear me recommend, please head over to my websites, brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, and pharmacistben.com. You can purchase longevity products right off the website. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team off the website as well for a one-time $25 fee. You can start yourself a longevity business if you're an entrepreneur, if you want to work out of your home, work in your pajamas, roll out of bed and do your work. If you want to have your own business, earn thank you checks for helping spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement pro- program, or if you simply want to get your products at the wholesale price for a one-time $25 fee, you can be in business, have your own business, call 866 866- 735-2470 for more information. That's 866-735-2470. Or you can sign up right off our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. Also would like to remind you to check out our Truth Skin Health products. If you're interested in truth, if you're interested in skin health products that really make a difference on your skin, if you're tired of paying for paying for water and fillers and waxes, never any water filler, waxes, emulsifiers, surfactant, silicon, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of our truth skin health products, Truth Transdermal C Serum, Truth Transdermal C Balm, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, and our Truth Retinol 5% Gel are all up at truthtreatments.com. We also have a skin health blog at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. All right, welcome to, back to the bright side. We have been talking about the principle of vibration. You could call it the law of vibration, which like the law of gravity is always true. That's what it means when something's a law. It's always true. If you drop something off the top of a building, it's always going to drop downwards. It's always going to fall down. It's not going to go up. That's because gravity is a law. Likewise, vibration is a law. Everything Everything vibrates, our entire universe, everything we know in the universe. Even if it doesn't appear to be moving, it's all in motion. Even what appears to be still and motionless is just moving at a uh, a slower vibration. Einstein called solid matter energy whose vibration has been lowered as to be perceptible to the senses. Atoms and electrons, the fundamental units of reality, are nothing more than localized vibration. They're not even things. They're processes. They're verbs. Everything in life is a verb. Everything in life is a process. This is where the clue to healing resides. If everything is in movement and everything is in process, it can go in either one direction or the other. It can go into the direction of breakdown or the, the direction of, the, of build up. When we're sick, when we're diseased, as we age, we're heading in the direction of breakdown. 
The trick to healing, the trick to wellness, the trick to strength and vitality is to turn the equation around so that we're heading into a direction of build up. In the world of health, the body is said to be well when everything that composes it is vibrating as it should, vibrating at the correct frequency, vibrating at the correct speed. Quality food, quality nutrition work to nourish the body because of their healthy vibrations. Modern medicine, on the other hand, is an abysmal failure. And it is this abysmal failure that we all know, at least in terms of dealing with chronic, long-term progressive diseases, because its tools, surgery, drugs, ablations, disrupt vibration. They disrupt healthy biological vibrations. They're incoherent. They're chaotic vibrations. When tissues and organs in the body are diseased, they're no longer vibrating correctly. And that is not airy-fairy. That is hardcore science. When tissues and organs in the body are stressed or diseased, they're not vibrating at the correct frequency. There's frequencies of health and there's frequencies of disease. And when we talk about health strategies, we're talking about strategies that reestablish correct frequency and vibration. And this is why thoughts and feelings equal or, or have the same mechanism as exercise and supplements. Thoughts and feelings work the same way exercise and supplements work, by vibration. And when we understand the vibratory nature of health and wellness, it will make sense that we can heal ourselves with thoughts. We can heal ourselves with feelings. When we understand the vibratory nature of the body and the vibratory nature of health, it won't be airy-fairy to think that you can, or to believe that you can think yourself back to health or that you can feel yourself back to health. Or conversely, it won't be airy-fairy to think that our diseases are at least partially related to how we're thinking because it's all about frequency. The frequency of a thought may be different from the frequency of vitamin C, but it's still about frequency. The emotion of love or the emotion of hate may be different from, may have a different frequency from uh, a sugar or a different frequency from a nutrient, but it's still the same idea because it's all about frequency. Thoughts and feelings, exercise and supplements, all the things we talk about for staying healthy are all about vibration. They're all vibratory phenomena that can help the body reestablish correct frequencies. Drugs and surgeries, not so much. Drugs and, frequent, uh, drugs and surgeries do not reestablish correct frequencies, ever. They disrupt correct frequencies, and even if surgeries are necessary or drugs are necessary sometime, sometimes, you want to use them as a last resort, and if you're on a prescription drug, as I've always said, and I always and will continue to say, if you're on a prescription drug, your number one health challenge should be to wean, figure out how to wean yourself off of it. The ancient Egyptians were one of the first cultures, maybe the first culture, to really understand the nature of vibration, or at least to record their uh, understandings of vibration. According to Egyptian wisdom, quote, nothing rests Everything moves, everything vibrates, unquote. And this is exactly what Albert Einstein said three, 4,000 years later. Reading from the New World Encyclopedia entry on Egyptian wisdom, quote, all entities are understood to exist as processes or vibrations in ultimate reality so that the only difference between different states of physical matter, mentality, and spirituality is the frequency of their vibration, unquote. How do you like that? The ancient Egyptians, 4,000, 4,000 years ago, said that the only difference between physical, mental, and spiritual is frequency, is vibration. They're all the same thing. They're just different frequency and different vibration. What's more, Egyptian texts tell us that the apparent differences between various forms are due entirely to their varying rate and their varying mode of vibration. And that means that the only difference between things or systems, whether that thing or a system is a rock or a stick or a bacteria or a human being, or whether that system is healthy or unhealthy, the only difference is vibration. In fact, when we think about life, we typically are not thinking about livingness because life is vibration and everything vibrates, so everything is alive, from rocks to viruses to stars to galaxies. It's all alive. You don't have to be a person or an animal to be alive because it's all vibration. Based on this idea of vibra vibration equaling life, a star is alive, a galaxy is alive, a rock is alive. But it's not cellular, and that's a big distinction, and that's an important distinction that we need to make. We'll talk about that when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. We'll be back right after this. 
right, we are back on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you tried to call in a few moments ago, we had a little problem with our phones. We're back up. 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you have questions about the longevity products, the longevity business, formulations, ingredients, skin health questions, if you or a loved one are dealing with a health challenge that you want help with, we can help you. 844-236-6010 is our number. That's 844-236-6010. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended, please go to my website's brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com, or you can call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. All right, so we're talking about the nature of vibration, everything, 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 everything exists, vibrates. That is so amazing. Everything's a verb. Everything is in process. Everything is in motion. Everything is dynamic. There's no stillness. There's no stasis. In fact, stagnation is always going to be the enemy in terms of health, in terms of the body. All disease is preceded by a slowing down, by a stagnation, by a lack of dynamism and a lack of movement. Everything in the universe is, uh, is alive, but everything in the universe is not cellular. The difference between a, a rock and, a, and an animal is, nothing, is not the life force. It's not that a rock is not alive. It's that a rock is not cellular. It's about cells. Cells equal life. And this is so important. We don't learn this. Uh, we, we never told this by our medical model because the medical model can't really do anything at the level of a cell. Biology is cellular. When we think of life we should be thinking of cells. Cells are where life begins. A molecule, a galaxy, a rock, these are alive, but they're acellular. They're non-cellular. Monkeys and dogs and cats and fungi and bacteria and grass and grains and, and all animals, including us, are cellular and our health depends on the health of a cell and this is where medicine has failed us. Health is about the cell, and even more specifically, it's about the vibration of the cell. Medicine doesn't tell us this. Medicine does not talk about the cell because medicine cannot do anything at the level of a cell. The cell, like the stuff that comes out of a cell, is intelligent. Its mechanisms have to be overridden. The cell has to be overridden. A cancer cell is doing its business as it sees, it, as it, as it sees fit. A cell that's diseased is still trying to be a cell. It's still trying to be alive. The answer is not to shut the cell up. It's to figure out why the cell is not operating as it should. Medicine overrides the wisdom of the cell through drugs, through brute force, with surgery, electrocution. And you can rest assured that in the future, in the not too distant future, surgeries and drugs will be considered barbaric and philistine and nobody's going to believe that we did that thing. We, we cut out gallbladders and breasts and, pain, and, and, and various organs of the body. In the, in the future, medicine will be vibrational medicine, it'll be light medicine, it'll be energy medicine. This is the medicine of our great-great-grandchildren, uh, great our great-great-grandchildren. 100, 200, 300 years, we'll be using vibration, we'll be using light, we'll be using energy to heal. This will be the new standards of care. And they'll look back and they'll say, oh my God, what were they thinking in the 19th and 20th and 21st century? To get, make the body better by poisoning it? to make a, a, the body healthier by removing organs and structures? Who came up with this system? This idea of the vibratory nature of reality and the vibratory nature of the cell and the vibratory nature that's linked to health and wellness was used by a medical visionary, a graduate of Johns Hopkins, named Dr. Royal Raymond Rife, R-I-F-E. And he understood that frequencies could be manipulated in a biological sense in order to heal the body. Dr. Reif was the inventor of the Reif machine, which is a vibration or frequency healing machine, frequency healing device. And Reif was a, no airy fairy hippie. He was a great scientist. He had this idea, the vision to invent a frequency generator that he used to heal all kinds of diseases. Dr. Reif was way ahead of his time. He was a medical pioneer. He's a prolific inventor. He invented medical instruments. He's actually considered one of the most prolific medical, uh, uh, medical inventors who ever lived and one of the most brilliant scientists of the 20th century. He was the discoverer of what, or the father of what could be called bioelectric medicine. That is a healing biological systems, cells and the human body using frequency, using vibration. If you've understood what we've talked about here for the last three or four days, it makes sense. Dr. Reif used vibration and used frequency to restore the body back to health. Dr. Reif 
isolated specific organ or specific organs, specific systems in the body that were sick. And he determined that they were sick because their vibration was off, because their frequency was off. Dr. Reif in the early 20th century developed technology that's still used today in all kinds of fields. Optics, he developed these high power, super high powered microscopes, electronics, radiochemistry, biochemistry, ballistics, aviation. An amazingly prolific scientist, probably, probably the most prolific and important scientist of the 20th century that nobody's ever heard of. Very likely you guys have heard of him, but most people have never heard of Dr. Royal Reif. Reif developed high powered microscopes that allowed him to see organisms that nobody knew existed and certainly nobody had ever seen before. He, had, he, had, he developed microscopes that were 60,000 times more powerful than ordinary microscopes, almost as, uh, maybe even more powerful than electron microscopes. And with these super high tech, high powered homemade microscopes, he observed and identified bacteria and viruses. He even was able to spot little shape-shifting entities inside the blood, little entities that nobody knew existed and that are still, still uh, the medical model does not recognize, little entities called pleomorphs, P-L-E-I-O-M-O-R-P-H-S. These pleomorphs would literally change shapes right before Dr. Reif's eyes. Pleomorph means various shapes in Latin. And these little entities would actually change their shape in the blood right in front of Dr. Reif's eyes. He, he could actually see these things changing shape. And not only did they change shape, but they went from viral forms to bacterial forms to funguses and back and forth. They changed shapes, they changed uh, their nature as viruses or bacteria or as, or as funguses all in front of Dr. Reif's eyes. And he, by the way, he did all this with the support and the funding and the friendship of big organizations. Remember, this is a Johns Hopkins guy. He was working with, with the Mayo Clinic and the University of Chicago and New York Children's Hospital. He won all these prestigious medical awards. And this guy was a hardcore, legitimate establishment scientist. And he's talking about pleomorphs in the blood, substances, entities, living entities that change shape and change their nature from viral to bacterial to fungal in the blink of an eye. And as far as the vibratory nature of health and disease go, it's a fair statement that Reif pretty much invented, at least developed, at least was, uh, was the discoverer of bioelectric medicine itself. Dr. Reif used these ideas about vibration and frequency and the nature of disease and vibration in the early 1900s to treat a whole wide variety of diseases, including cancer. And what Reif discovered was that disease Sickness, as well as disease-causing agents, germs, and viruses, and funguses, all had specific frequencies. And by adjusting those frequencies, he could restore the body back to health. And by playing with the frequencies of viruses and bacteria, he could actually kill viruses and bacteria. Reif said that everything has a frequency, you could find that frequency, and then you could send an intense enough matching frequency to kill living things or to reestablish e uh, uh, correct vibration in organs and systems in the body. This phenomenon, by the way, is called resonance, and we're going to talk about this on our next Bright Side episode. Resonance frequencies. I hope I'm not getting too electrical or too scientific here because it's really very important if we're not feeling as well as we should, if we're not as healthy as we'd like to be, to understand the fundamental nature, the fundamental vibratory nature linked to how well or how not well we feel. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll return with your phone calls right after this. Don't go away. Okay, we are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. 844-236-6010 is our number. We got lines open for you. If you have questions about uh, anything we're speaking about here today, the nature of vibration, Dr. Royal Reif. Uh, we'll talk about uh, Dr. Reif here on our next Bright Side episode, but in the meantime, if you're interested in learning more, you might want to check out a book called The Reif Handbook. It's about uh, 700 pages of information about frequency and health. It goes through, it goes through a really heavy thing here. It goes through uh, all kinds of diseases and matches up the frequencies associated with these diseases. You can get your own frequency adjusting machines. I'm not sure about the quality of some of them, but they're available pretty readily. Look up Rife machine or frequency modifying machine. In this book, uh, I'm not sure who wrote this book here, 
but it's all based on uh, Dr. Nina Silver, S-Y-L-V-E-R. Uh, it's got all kinds of good information about vibrational medicine and frequency medicine and also links various frequencies to various disease states. It's called the Rife Handbook of Frequency Therapy and Holistic Health. It's a huge thing. It'll probably cost you about 100 bucks. And... Uh, I know it's good for healers. It might be good for folks who are dealing with uh, somebody, somebody sick in the family, or if you're sick yourself. It's got also has some good generic health information in it as well. We'll continue talking about frequency and health and Dr. Royal Rife's amazing work on our next Bright Side episode. Eight four four two three six sixty ten is our number on the Bright Side. If you want to purchase any of the Longevity products or join the Bright Side Ben team, please call eight six six seven three five twenty four seventy. That's eight six six seven three five twenty four seventy. All right, we'll get your calls here momentarily, so hang on. A couple stories I want to tell you about here. This one, this one came to me from uh, from my buddy Dave in Texas. I don't know if you're listening out there, Dave. They wanted me to comment on a story that made the news yesterday. This is on. Uh, uh, this is from the uh, from literature that was published in the Journal of Clinical Oncology. Clear link between heavy B vitamin intake and lung cancer. Hmm, how interesting. New research suggests long-term high-dose supplementation with vitamins B6 and B12 is associated with a two-fold, two to four-fold increased risk in lung cancer in men who smoke. How interesting. They take men who smoke. And then they do a, assess how much B vitamins they're taking and then determine it, what their risk is of lung cancer. First of all, you don't want to do a study on men who smoke. Obviously, they're going to be predisposed to cancer. Secondly, we don't know if the, these men who smoked who had higher risk of, uh, of cancer who were using the B vitamins were also eating lots of sugar or eating more sugar than their counterparts who had lower risks. We don't know anything about these guys. And this is the problem with what is called epidemiological studies where they just take a bunch of people and ask them what they're doing because we don't know everything that they're doing. This is not science. This is statistics. Remember the three kinds of lies. You got uh, lies, damn lies, and statistics, and I pay zero attention to any conclusions that are drawn for ep epidemiological studies that are based only in numbers and statistics. The fact of the matter is, is the B vitamins are incredibly important, and they're water-soluble. So you can't overdose on vitamin B6 because your body will excrete it. Secondly, vitamin B12 doesn't just go into the blood when you eat it. It has to be absorbed through mechanisms in the stomach and various hormones and peptides, specifically something called intrinsic factor, which means you can't overdose on vitamin B12 either. Also, you never want to take just two B vitamins. You want to take the entire complex. The body will excrete the uh, B vitamins that it's not getting along with the B vitamins that it is. So you can run deficient in vitamin B3 and vitamin B1. You can run deficient in folic acid if you're just taking vitamin B6 and B12. So it could very well have been that all that vitamin B6 was causing deficiencies in other B vitamins. In other words, don't blame the B vitamins. Silliness when you understand how, number one, how incredibly important these things are, and number two, when you understand that how incredibly non-toxic they are. All right, from, uh, let's see here. This one is from uh, Elementary Pharmacology and Therapeutics. Liquid nutrition may benefit children with Crohn's disease. An analysis of studies indicates that what's called exclusive enteral nutrition, that is liquid nutrition, when individuals receive only liquid nutrition, may be an effective treatment for children with Crohn's disease. Yes, it is effective treatment, because when you have Crohn's disease, you're not absorbing your nutrients. And when you use liquid nutrition, you increase the likelihood that nutritional, that, that uh, vitamins and minerals and essential fats and other nutrients will get into the body. Crohn's disease is a, involves a, a defect at the level of the intestine. That means that absorption of nutrients will be compromised. If you can do nutrients in liquids, liquid form, you'll minimize the amount of digestive work that the body has to do, increase the likelihood that nutrients will be absorbed into the blood. Anybody with digestive health issues will benefit from liquid nutrition. Anybody with any health issue will benefit from liquid nutrition. Everybody benefits from liquid nutrition, whether that liquid nutrition is soups, whether that liquid nutrition is veggie juices, whether that liquid nutrition is your beyond tangy tangerine. Pharmacy school, one of the first things we learn, first semester of pharmacy school is that liquid nutrients are always going to be absorbed better than solid nutrients or liquid dosage forms are always going to be more effectively absorbed than non-liquid dosage forms. Okay. 844-236-6010 is our number. Let us go to, uh, let's go to Gary in Colorado. Good morning, Gary. Welcome to the Bright Side. 
Welcome, Ben. Thank you very much. I have an interesting issue. A medical yes. model um, recommended uh, floral smelling air sprays. Within the past year, the residue of digestion has become offensively and tremendously more odiferous. Well, so what, what's, uh, hang on, Gary. What are you saying now? The, like your, uh, your bowel movements you're talking about? Yes. Okay, that's it. they become uh, they smell worse over time over the course of the last year. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Digestive health issues, absolutely, has to do with bacteria in the gut. Now, typically, you're going to notice some discomfort, digestive discomfort, also gas or bloating. In addition to the, how how did you put no. it? No, none of that. No. Just the just the odor. Yes. I would be paying much closer attention. It seems to me unlikely that you're not having other health, other digestive health challenges. Pay very close attention. Since here's the thing about digestive issues, and I know this personally in my own life, and I also know from my patients. These things go under the radar. We don't notice them until we start to pay attention to them. That's why I'm always talking about writing things down, doing a food diary. The uh, odor of your bowel movements, should, this shouldn't be offensive or strong. If it is, typically it has to do with bacteria in the gut. I'd be using fermented foods. I would be uh, using um, a probiotic supplements, and I would also be uh, looking for other digestive symptoms and then looking for foods that are associated with those digestive symptoms and, and then eliminating those foods. You might also want to use things called prebiotics, which help support the health of the probiotics. In other words, there are substances that the probiotics can get nourishment from, specifically fiber. Fiber is unbelievably important, not just for the bacteria, but also for the liver and also for the gallbladder, also for the entire bile system. Uh, I like I personally recommend a fiber drink where you grind up fiber in a little coffee grinder, flax seeds and chia seeds, maybe 10 or 15 grams, like a, maybe two or three t a teaspoons of fiber, of a seeds, and then you grind up the fiber, grind up the seeds into fiber, and then, uh, and then maybe put a little spice in there. I like clove and cinnamon. Uh, you could put a touch of honey to make it sweet and then drink that down uh, once a day or once every couple of days. Are your bowel movements solid and all that? Any yeah. diarrhea or anything? No. Okay, good. Yeah, the, uh, make sure you get on that fiber drink. Use probiotic supplement, fermented foods, and I would sure be doing a food diary if I were you because uh, it seems unlikely that uh, you don't have an issue with specific foods, and you're only going to know that if you write things down. Gary, i got to go. Thanks so much for your call. Appreciate it. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Got to take a quick break, and we will come back with more good health information as well as your phone calls. 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. side 844-236-6010 is our number larry in indiana good morning good morning ben um i'm fascinated with uh, some reading i did about uh, this phd biochemist who died in 1996 he was uh, uh his name was ernest t krebs oh yeah eugene krebs you're, you're talking about eugene krebs no, Ernst, Ernst T. Krebs, E-R-N-S-T, T. Krebs. Oh, okay. Tell me about Ernst Krebs then. He was, he was a Ph.D. biochemist, and uh, he did a lot of uh, research on uh, something called panganic acid and amygdalin. Uh, are you sure acid. you're – okay, I know who you're talking about. I, I, I thought his name was uh, – I didn't know his name. first name was Ernst, but I know who you're talking about. Yeah, he uh, – Laetro, vitamin B17, yeah, right. you're talking about? Okay, yeah, I was thinking, I thought his name was Eugene. You sure it's Ernst Krebs? Maybe yeah, maybe Ernst, had both. Ernst, I'm looking on Wikipedia right now. Okay, gotcha. Okay, good. Fair anyway, enough. He, he did a lot of uh, research. He was fascinated with a, uh, a particular people who lived in the Himalaya Mountains of northern India called the Hunza people, and they oh, yeah. were typically the, uh, 100 years old, and they were healthy yeah. well into their 90s. And Yeah, Dr. Know, Wallach talks about them. And, he was fascinated with these people, and he found out that they ate large quantities of uh, apricot seeds and millet. Interesting. And E17 called the amygdalin. Or, right, uh, right. Yeah. And anyway, he, he uh, got a patent on this substance, and he isolated it, called it laetril. Yeah. Anyway, the pharmaceutical industry immediately squashed it, saying it was quackery, because he found out that it targeted cancer cells. 
it did not harm the healthy cells in our body. So right. I was just wondering, what did you, what do you think of? Um, well, here's the deal with lay. Yeah, here's the deal. Did did your mom ever tell you not to swallow watermelon seeds or apple seeds when you were a kid? Yeah, I always you heard that, yeah. Yeah, you always heard that, right? That's because seeds contain anti-nutrients. These anti-nutrients are specific for fast-dividing cells, uh, and they're defense, they're defense chemicals. The seed, nature puts them in the seeds so people don't, so uh, animals won't eat the seeds, or if animals eat the seeds, they'll die and they won't eat any more seeds. Nature's very protective of its seeds. We've talked about these kinds of substances in the past. Gluten is such a substance. So nature doesn't want its seeds being eaten, and so seeds are loaded with these kinds of killing chemicals. Chemicals, amygdalin, vitamin B17, whatever you want to call it, laetrile, pangamic acid, whatever term you use, is one of those substances. However, because it has this kind of cell toxic effect, and whenever something is cell toxic, it's going to kill fast dividing cells faster than it will kill slow dividing cells. Fast dividing cells will take in more of the toxic substance. It can have some potential some potential anti cancer benefits. So it makes perfect sense that these seed these molecules or chemicals that are in seeds would have anti cancer properties. And it makes perfect sense that some would have more anti-cancer properties than others. And according to Dr. Krebs, Laetrile, as you pointed out, has some really powerful anti-cancer properties. It's interesting how the drug companies don't like this. uh, And the medical model will not only treat you as a quack if you promote these things, they can actually put you in jail if you promote these things, particularly if you're an MD. What are they so afraid of? Why are they so afraid of people treating themselves? Why are they so afraid of uh, of people promoting things that could possibly have anti-cancer properties? It's certainly not because they have a monopoly on treating cancer. It's certainly not because they know how to treat cancer. Cancer is uh, the second leading cause of death and uh, rates are increasing. So I don't know why the medical model of drug companies are so adamant about squashing these these alternative therapies, whether they work or not. I think everybody should be able to make their own decision. And as far as Laetrile goes, or vitamin B17, as you say, uh, there is quite a bit of good information that supports its use for folks who are dealing with cancer. There's a really cool book by a guy named Edward, Edward G. Edward Griffin, who's written about the right. Federal Reserve. You know who he is? Yeah, He's written, yes. yes, he has a book called World Without Cancer where he talks about this. Uh, and it's really, really very interesting reading. Uh, Laetrile, vitamin B17, whatever you want to call it, is well known for being in almonds, but it's also found, as you say, in apricot seeds and uh, grape seeds, apple seeds, watermelon seeds, um, bamboo, lima beans, all of these. Spinach has some laetrile in it. So uh, if you don't want to go out all out and get your vitamin B17, which I think you can still get, it's still available, you can eat, uh, eat these kinds of foods. Unfortunately, Seeds and grains also have other anti-nutrients that may not be so good for you. But if you're dealing with cancer, it might be something to, might be something to think about. Strawberry strawberries also are a good source of uh, vitamin B17 or laetrile. Does that help, Larry? Yeah, it helps quite a bit. All right, buddy. Have a good day. Thanks for your call. Appreciate it. Let us move on to Mary in Michigan. Good morning, Mary. Welcome to the bright side. Good morning, Ben. Um, I've talked to you in the first of all before I get into my situation. The gentleman that called about the the foul smelling stools. Yes. Uh, um, I I think it would be a good idea if he had his stools checked for blood in them because nothing makes it smell worse than that. Uh, that's not a bad idea. If you're listening out there, Gary, or also if the color of the stools is is, is like you can see red or, or really really dark brown right. in there, right. that might have something to do with it as well. Fungus could, yeast can do it. Fungus can do it. I'm I'm always looking at the bacteria bacterial component right. when it comes to foul right. smelling stools. But from my personal experience, uh, you know, with caring for my mother, that was that was yeah. <laughs> that was a very good indicator. Okay, uh, good point. Thanks, Mary. I have had very positive. Uh, experience uh, with the right frequency technology. Okay. And, uh, You've it, heard of it. You've used it. I've in, heard of it. I it, it was used on me in, a, in an alternative hospital that I attended years ago, and uh, of course most of the patients had no idea what they were sitting in that room and, and was happening to them, but I did. So. <laughs> Very nice. How did you know about it? Uh, just through you know, always paying attention. Just being a reader. To alternative information. Good for you. What did you use it to treat? If I can, if I maybe. Uh, well, like I say, I was in an not... alternative hospital. We'd go into a room, and he had one in there, and we'd all be treated at the same time. What when were they treating? Can I ask? Uh, they were basically treating cancer, but anything. Okay. I wasn't there for cancer. 
uh, and I was there for uh, angina, and I felt that the first treatment, the treatments after that, I didn't feel it too much. But boy, that first treatment, I sure did. And by feeling it, you meant your health improved? The angina improved? Oh, it definitely improved uh, while I was there. Um, it was, uh, it was, uh, it, it created a, a, a tightness in my chest. Okay. Like I say I could feel it. The other patients couldn't feel a thing. How, how about the the cancer patients? Did you notice that people were getting results? Well, they were getting results from everything they did. There was the, it was uh, Dr. Donsbaz's uh, hospital down in Mexico. If okay. you're familiar and with that. I'm not familiar with him, but he he has a Rife machine. He was using it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for and, sharing and, that. And and uh, personally, I've 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 you know used the small one that you talk about buying. I've I've used I've had experience with that as well. And it is very interesting in, uh, technology. It, it it's awesome. Um, the um, the reason that I called you is I had called previously about uh, having uh, cataract surgery, and I told you I needed a, a, a pre-op before, okay. before the surgery. Okay, I remember that. Did you have uh, the surgery? Yeah, no, 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 I failed the pre-op. Um, uh, I've got a very strong heart murmur, and okay. I'm going to have to be working on that uh, to improve that. Apparently, what I have been trying to work on through your assistance, and it's helped tremendously, is I've always thought these were, that these feelings were stomach problems. Uh -huh. Apparently it hasn't all been stomach. Apparently some of it's been, been my the heart. heart. Ah, um, interesting. Yeah, so, so I'm, and, and, and she, of course the doctor initially and instantly says, you know, it's high blood pressure, which um, I honestly don't think I have. I think from what I'm reading since I saw the doctor, uh, is that I've been, I've probably got H. pylori. Apparently everybody, almost everybody does. Almost everybody think, does, yeah. Yeah. H, uh, for the listeners, my, H. pylori, my, let me just real quick, Mary, for the listeners, uh, H. pylori is a bacteria that lives ordinarily in the body, but it can overgrow. It particularly overgrows under conditions of low stomach acid. And once that happens, you, you're off, you can be off to the disease races and you can definitely, it can definitely cause cardiovascular problems and circulatory problems. Certainly ulcers are, are linked to H. pylori. These days they give you antibiotics to uh, kill the H. pylori virus if you have an, a stomach ulcer. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Mary. Okay, so that's what I'm, uh, that's the premise I'm kind of working on uh, because I have not been able to completely rid myself of my, of my indigestion. Okay, um, let me give you a couple ideas, okay? And it sounds like you're on the right track and you're doing good things. Food diary, absolutely you want to do that. And I would start mm -hmm. off with a swear of cleanse. Well, you see, know, all the things, things we... I've done, Ben. Those things okay, I've Because so, I've listened to you for a long time now. And okay, well, stay on it. Keep, keep doing the food diary because you may be missing something. But that's not... Okay. Uh, there's more to it than that. But just keep okay. doing that because you may be missing something. You may also want to use bentonite clay to help right. sop up... Ex if you're, you're already doing that, bentonite clay yeah. on a daily basis. I was doing it, feeling better, stopped doing it. <laughs> Get back on it, Mary. Hey, I'm out of time. I was going to tell you about hyperbaric oxygen. That's something else I would try if I were you. Hyperbaric, because if you're not circulating blood, that means you could be uh, depriving your cells of oxygen, and you could be accumulating carbon dioxide and other poisons inside the body. Hyperbaric oxygen can be very helpful. That's uh, that's one of my uh, go-to recommendations for uh, heart, health issues, heart health problems, especially angina. Mary, that's all the time we have for today. I apologize. If you want to send me an email, I'm happy to help you out. Send it to ben at ksco.com. Put your phone number in there, and uh, I'll give you a call back. Thanks for your call. Appreciate it. And thanks for all your calls. Appreciate all of you guys. Have yourselves a wonderful, awesome, beautiful, spectacular day. Tomorrow we'll talk. continue continue talking about the right machine and frequency medicine. You've been listening to The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll talk to you all later, folks. Bye for now.